From the standpoint of the New Testament, what is the nature of the world and the meaning of our existence upon it? Paul says the creation was subject to vanity, not of its own will, but by reason of him who subjected it. Romans 8, 20. Paul is speaking of the state of things on earth. Put thus, it is a very strange and startling idea. He teaches that life on earth is not for man's good and is not directed by the good and that everything on earth merely happens. Paul does not say that things on this earth are right or intentional or governed by a supreme God. On the contrary, he says quite openly that things on this earth are subject to vanity. Not because the inhabitants wish it, but by reason of him who subjected it. This implies a power who in regard to creation on the small earth is inimical to man. If we suppose that all that has power over creation on earth is to be called by the name of God, and if that at the same time we believe that God is one and also good, this statement of Paul is incomprehensible. How? If a supreme God rules directly all the phenomenally created worlds and his will reaches them directly, can it be said that creation is subjected to vanity against its will? If Paul is preaching the idea of good, the fundamental conception of a supreme and good force acting on all living things, how can he make so strange a statement? Man, he says, as part of creation, is forcibly subjected to vanity against his will. How is it possible then to entertain the view that God is good? Certainly, looking at life and its events and believing that a supremely good God directs all things, it is impossible to explain even a fraction of the incidents that take place on the earth. But Paul does not say that the power of acting on this created earth with all its creatures is good. Actually, he speaks of a God of this world who blinds the minds of men, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Man, as part of creation, has been subjected to vanity and is under some power, some influence, some good that acts against his will against what he wants. The creature was subjected to vanity, not of its own will. By whose will? By reason of him who subjected it. Paul does not call him God. What explanation does Paul give? The creation was subjected to vanity. In the Greek, Mateotes. This means faultiness, uselessness, meaningless, or in the Latin, frustration, in vainness. Paul adds, in the hope that it might escape from bondage into liberty, into the liberty of the glory of the children of God. We ourselves, he says, are all in this situation. Not only, he continues, the whole creation groans and travails in pain together. Not only so, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, as if confined in a narrow prison, 
awaiting our adoption as sons of God. The useless suffering of creation of the world is recognized. No attempt is made to hide it or to say that it is the best of the worlds. All this suffering, all this pain, all this misery, all this death, destruction, and meaningless is not explained in terms of itself. Life is not explicable as such. It cannot as such be understood. An idea is concealed behind its invisible outward appearance. An idea not derived from the deductions we can make from what we see, but an idea for which there is no sense proof.